There are a ton of ways to camera track inside of Blender, and so today I'm going to showcase one of my own methods I've been using for a little bit that will hopefully help you guys out. Before we get started, I just want to say a massive thank you to all my Patreon members. Without your support, I don't know if I could provide free content here on YouTube, so I really do appreciate it. If you are interested in joining, I'll actually have some links down below where you can check out some of the amazing perks I offer. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into it. So the first thing I need to do is let's convert our video file into a folder that looks like this, which is a image sequence. So I'm going to come plus VFX or sorry, uh, video editing, video editing, and we can go ahead and add in our movie here. So here is my video file. I'm going to add the movie strip and then down here, I'm not going to use the full fr uh, frame range. So I'm just going to set it to end at 200 just so I can uh, view this a little easier. Uh, this is where you want to plug in the correct resolution and the uh, frame rate. So you can see all of those numbers are fine there. Uh, so I'm going to leave it like that. And then in the output tab, uh, we can come here, set a new file location. Uh, I'm going to save it as PNG. I know it's not the uh, best kind of industry standard way, but I just want to save on some space for this tutorial. And honestly, I don't think we're going to need to use all of that extra data. So again, just uh, PNG right there. I'm going to set it to RGB since we don't need alpha. Now, PNG is actually a lossless format, so we can go ahead and play around with this compression value. Uh, technically, we could set it all the way up to 100 to save on all of the space. And it's not going to uh, compress our uh, quality of our video. It's just going to increase our render time. And so I'm going to leave it at 15. I feel like that's a good kind of compromise there. So once we have all of that set up, we can come and render the animation. And so once all of that is finished rendering, we should have a folder that looks like this, where each frame of our video file is basically rendered in its own individual image file. And so we have all of this right here from one to 200. So that is looking good. Let's come out to uh, add a new general scene. And so now we need to go ahead and align our 3D camera to the real world camera inside of our uh, 3D scene. The best kind of program to use is FSpy for that. And so I'll have a link to that down below. Now we're going to need the FSpy program. And then we're also going to need a importer add-on for Blender. And so download both of those two things. I'll show you how to install the importer add-on in a little bit. But let's go ahead and jump inside of FSpy and open up our image sequence. I'm just going to use the first frame. And so let's drag that into here. I'm going to dim image off and now all we need to do is just align our scene and so we have this x and y value here it's very nice because we have a lot of nice lines for this specific scene and so specifically i noticed that these lines are going to be perpendicular to each other just because this uh, building is very square and so it's going to be very nice and give us a uh, very good axes inside of blender and so let's just place it there i'm zooming in by the way uh, by holding shift and so uh, that's how you can just be a little bit more accurate there so I'm going to place these X ones here. I'm just using kind of straight lines along these edges here. Uh, and we'll use like the, the top of this here. Actually, I like this line down here and we'll use this one instead. So that is leave this one. It's actually a little bit hard to see. So right there. Uh, so now you can see we actually have our uh, center of our scene. I like to do some checks before I kind of send this off the blender. So we'll do uh, the YZ floor. You can see that we're having this result. I'm basically just checking the kind of line over here to make sure everything lines up and that is looking good. And then we'll come to the XZ uh, line and then we'll, we'll line up this side of the building here, uh, which that is also looking good. So uh, now let's, uh, this is going to be our origin of our blender scene. So I do want to define this. So I'll put it on the very edge of our building there. So now everything is looking good. You can see over here, if we check the focal length, it's actually giving, giving us a focal length now. And so that's going to be uh, really good to import into Blender and give uh, some of that camera information there. So I'm going to control S. We'll just save this into a new kind of location here. And there we go. So now we can come back inside Blender and we want to go ahead and add uh, that camera back into this Blender scene. So like I said before, we're going to need the importer add-on. And so let's go to edit preferences add-ons. And then you just want to hit install up there and then locate uh, the zip file that you installed from the link down below. Once you have that installed, you should have a window that kind of pops up like this. That means that you installed the add-on correctly. Uh, you just want to make sure this is checked. And so now with that checked, if we go to file import, we should see this F spy down here. And so we can click that and then open up that project that we just made. Okay. So here is my F spy project. I can click that and import that into my scene. So now we have this as our scene. Uh, if we scroll throughout our footage, we can see that we no longer have all of the frames in. This is just the uh, kind of singular still that we brought into F spy. So what we need to go ahead and do is we need to go ahead and uh, camera track this shot. 
And so what I'm going to use is I'm going to use the geometry tracker add-on by Keen Tools. There will be a link in the description below if you want to take a look at that. I do believe they have a free trial version, and so uh, definitely go check that out. But in order to install that, we're going to just going to go to the same process here, hit install, locate that zip file. And then once you have that, you should have a uh, button that pro pops up like here. The only kind of caveat to this uh, that's different is that we do need to have this check down here. Uh, and if you do have a license, anything, this is where you can uh, come and plug in your license. And so once we have that enabled, if we hit in, we can go over to this side and there's a new geo tracker kind of menu here. Let's create a new geo tracker and it's automatically detected our camera, which is very nice. However, we don't have any clip data or any geometry data into our scene. So let's go ahead and open up our clip. That's just going to be your image sequence that you made before. So we're going to hit A to select all my image files for open the clip. And now if we scrub throughout, we can see we actually have our video file into our camera background. And so that's nice. Uh, now let's go ahead and uh, first before we do anything we do have to analyze our footage you should see that there's a analyze button here if you haven't uh, analyzed it before and so just click that it'll go forward and backward through your scene basically just getting a lot of the background data uh, you don't have to worry about that it's uh, all of the stuff that it kind of handles itself uh, one thing I do want to call attention to real quick is the camera right now uh, actually has that focal length number that we had from FSpy into it. And so that's the great thing about uh, kind of this workflow is uh, FSpy and the GeoTracker add-on work hand in hand with each other. It's kind of amazing pairing of uh, add-ons, you know, that were never kind of meant to work together, but just using this method, it, you know, works flawlessly. And so that's just a really good uh, thing to know is that we actually have some of that FSpy data into there. So let's click that. We do need some geometry right now. Now we can see we have our origin point and it's basically along this uh, basically line of our building. And so I want to go ahead and use some of that information. So let's bring a new window out here. I can go ahead and uh, let's add a shift a add a mesh plane and then R rotate that like that. I'm basically just going to track this side of the building here. I notice uh, if I kind of go throughout my footage, this side of the building becomes a little bit squished in the frame. And so it might uh, be a little bit hard to track that. And so uh, we can see this side of the building is perfectly in frame the uh, kind of entire footage. So that's my rationale of why I'm just using that side of the building for now for tracking. So let's uh, come over here. Uh, if you remember, we set our world origin. So what I can actually do is hit tab and I'll hit a to select everything G X and then holding control. I can snap it over uh, basically. So our origin point is on that line now. So if I come out of edit mode by hitting tab, I can hit S and basically scale that down now. And so that's really nice to have uh, just so you can get very, very precise onto that side. Uh, so let's G Z move that up. And then I already scaled this side. I want to try to match uh, the kind of side over here. So that is looking pretty good and matches pretty well into our scene. So uh, that's what I'm going to stick with. So let's go ahead and save the project uh, before we do anything because it might crash on us. Let's join the areas over here and I'm going to go ahead and pick select this to be our geometry. So the plane object there. So now we have everything ready and set up to uh, actually camera track. So down here we have a new tracking setting. And so usually this add on is meant to track geometry. All this means is that uh, this is whatever uh, the object that is going to be moving. And so we don't want our geometry to actually be moving. We want that to be uh, still in our scene. We want the camera to be moving. So I'll hit camera right here. And then on the first frame, this is the frame that we use inside of fspy i'm going to start the pen mode so now you can see that we have this result we basically have this green box right here and that's very important you always kind of want to check that that green box is there uh, because if you don't have it that basically means that the model is incompatible with your thing so you might need to find another model uh, or anything like that uh, and so we do have this green line here so that is good we are ready to start tracking and so for this specific scene it's super simple since we already aligned everything and the building is looking correct all we need to do is come over here and press this button and have it track forward okay so once it's reached the end you can come back and kind of do some uh, self-checking right here you can see it's doing a pretty good job of uh, you know uh, tracking throughout our footage and basically kind of looks like a planar track right now and so uh, that is all good. You can, of course, uh, do some refinements by adding some pins and everything there. I'm not going to be going into uh, into depth there uh, just because there are plenty of tutorials on this add on already. But uh, you can see we've gotten a pretty good result. 
And if we exit out of pen mode now, and then we'll kind of uh, exit out of the camera, we can see that if we play the footage now, our camera is actually moving down here and basically camera track to our scene. And so that looks really good and is going to give us a super nice result. And so, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Now we have our camera track and we are ready to go. So let's uh, go ahead and do some fun little stuff for this scene. So say I wanted to put some CGI on the side of this building here. Let's uh, go ahead and add, we'll just add our, uh, you know, trusty monkey in here. So right here, and then let's just make it on uh, to our plane. And so I basically, whoops, don't want to do that side. I want to do this side. And so we'll just come to the side view here and I'll scale down my monkey. Uh, now, this is actually one thing that I do want to kind of call attention to. Uh, the scale of our scene is not actually set up yet. And so let me just position the monkey onto the slide just so we can show that the uh, camera track is accurate. And so there it's basically on the side right there. And then I can uh, go here and I'll just move it kind of up here and we can hide that and I'll close these areas. Okay, so now you can see our monkey is uh, tracked onto the side of the building. We'll just go ahead and turn some of these off so we can see that. Uh, but yeah, so now it's sticking pretty well and is giving us a pretty good result. And so uh, that's basically it. Let's go ahead and set up the correct scaling of our scene just because setting up the correct scale of our scene is very important for depth of field, for ambient occlusion, lighting, a uh, bunch of stuff inside of Blender, even simulation and stuff like that. Uh, if we go ahead, I like uh, how I like doing it is we'll go ahead and add a mesh, we'll go to cube. And uh, for this cube, if we hit N over here and go to item, we can see these dimensions over here. So by default, each cube is set to two meters in every way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set in the X and Y axis to 0.5. And then in the Z axis, I'm going to set to 1.8. And so I pick those numbers because 1.8 is basically six feet. And so this uh, Q right here is basically the height of a average person right now. And so that is way too big. This person is basically, you know, like four or five stories tall right now. And so we basically need to scale this person down. So it's the uh, exact kind of height into the scene. So let's just uh, move him up. So he's on the floor plane of my scene right here. And then uh, what we will notice right here is, uh, you know, we do want to kind of use uh, some points of reference into our scene. So we actually have a nice kind of uh, guardrail and bridge up here. So we know uh, that the person would roughly be ending around right here is uh, kind of what six feet would be in this specific scene. So let's go ahead and uh, add that in. What I want to do is I want to add a uh, shift a will add a new empty plane axis. So like that. And then I want to select all of my objects. So I'll select everything besides our cube object, our cube object. We don't want to actually affect uh, in the scaling because the scaling is already accurate. Uh, let's go ahead and select our empty last just so it's the active object, uh, the highlighted yellow one. Then we can hit control P and set parent to object. So now that we have that, uh, we can basically just scale this and the whole kind of scene and everything uh, remains accurate. However, now it's just scaling down our little uh, guy right here. And so that's exactly what we want. Let's scale him down a little bit more. And so now if I kind of, you know, would place him up here, he would roughly be the exact height as we want. Let's actually uh, G, Y, move him over here. Then I'll G, Z, move him up. And so you can see uh, we're getting pretty close. I actually might scale it down a little bit more. So something maybe like this. Uh, so G, Y, G, Z. And so, yeah, so now our uh, person is basically just standing on the side of our building right there. And so uh, that is roughly around what I would expect uh, six feet to be in the real world. Uh, and so now we have the correct scene scaled. And the reason we did it with a empty is because our camera path is actually not affected. You can see all of our camera information is still accurate. It's still giving us a good track uh, and all of that stuff is set up. And so that's kind of my own workflow in order to set up the scale correctly into my scene. Uh, now that we have that, we can just go and delete that little guy. It was just uh, used for reference. And so, yeah, so that's pretty much it. We have the scale correctly defined. We have everything uh, kind of correctly defined up here. And yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, the only kind of final things I want to talk about and, and some things to take into consideration uh, is that, you know, with this method, we don't have perfect, uh, you know, workflow for lens distortion. And so if you don't know, lens distortion is in every kind of camera lens that we use. Uh, basically, towards the edges of the lens, there's going to be some warping and some distortion uh, and stuff effects. And so uh, basically straight lines towards the edge of our frame are going to be a little bit curved. And so that uh, in the traditional kind of camera workflow that does take that into consideration and actually tries to estimate that. 
Uh, however, in this workflow, it actually doesn't give us any of that information. So that's purely something that you're going to have to worry about in the compositing space. And so the kind of net, uh, the final thing that it's going to do is that it's not going to be the most accurate camera track outside of the area that you actually use for the geometry. So we can actually see if we kind of scrub through our footage. It's doing a pretty good job to actually track to the building. However, areas out here, we'll go ahead and demonstrate that by just adding like a UV sphere out here. Uh, you can actually see if I kind of play this, it's jittering around a ton. And so we'll just play that. You can see it's, uh, you know, bobbing around and everything. Again, that's just because uh, we're using only this information in the screen rather uh, than in actual camera tracking. We would be using all of the kind of pixel data everywhere uh, to get an accurate track. So just keep that in mind. Again, uh, if I was using and adding CGI out here, uh, this would probably be where I'd go back into the traditional camera tracking route. Uh, but again, since for this shot, you know, say I get a client shot who just wants to add a object on the side of the building, uh, this is the use case I would do for this specific camera tracking. So hopefully that gives you an idea of when to use this versus when not to use this. And so uh, that's pretty much it from here. You would just be adding some CGI and some, uh, you know, stuff to the building, whatever you wanted to use there. Uh, and then going into compositing and to composite this realistically. But anyways, that's uh, pretty much my entire process. Hopefully you guys found this useful and can apply it to your own workflow. Now, if you made it this far in the video, I greatly appreciate it if you liked and subscribed as it would greatly help me out. Also, if you want to continue lear your learning, I actually have a full visual effects course where I go a little bit more slower pace for you beginners out there. So I'll definitely have a link down below for that if you are interested. Anyways, thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.